Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you, and God bless you. I hope you're having a great day. This is what some people call New Year's Day. It's just another day. But I don't really need to go into detail about that. Allah will judge between those who are wicked and those who are not. But today I want to talk about something I talked about in a previous video. It doesn't go without surprise that those who know what I'm those who know the videos I'm making. They seek to refute it, which is fine. That's what I asked them to do. Notice they don't come to my page and do it. They have multiple faith. They have multiple uh, websites. They have no, multiple means of delivering their message, which is fine. By Allah, you know you can't have the truth without falsehood. By Allah, you cannot have truth without falsehood. So, I just wanted to talk about what these folks, how these folks legitimize their belief in Hadith. Now, posting hours long videos of opinions, uh, posting short videos of ayahs where it says, obey Allah, obey the messenger, obey Allah, obey the messenger, obey Allah, obey the messenger. It's a very, those are very good, very, very, very good tactics. As long as you are obeying Allah and obeying the messenger in all of those ayahs. You can't clearly obey Allah and obey the messengers if you take what is untruthful because Allah will not give you anything of contradiction. You accept anything other than what Allah gave you, then you're accepting bid'ah and contradiction. Allah, there, In Allah, there is no contradiction. And the messengers are the delivery of truth, the deliverers of the, of the delivery with the, the way of delivery that Allah tells them to do it. They get their scripture from Allah. They deliver it to the people. They deliver the message in the warning, plain and clear. They are told exactly what to do in the Quran. Prophet Muhammad was told to deliver the message. He wasn't told to make up his own words. As a matter of fact, when he does, he's corrected. Oh, you have understanding. You would know that. But those who just want to keep doing what they do, they just want to keep, they want to say, well, I believe, but... Let them keep saying it. Anybody who watches my videos, I emphasize this. You can't say, I believe, but. Anything after that puts restrictions on your belief. The Quran is perfect, but. Automatically. As soon as that person says, but, you know that person has just disbelieved in the Quran. As soon as they say, but. I can't think of a single thing that goes with, but. That could that could not go against that previous statement, because it puts it puts a restriction on that. There's no restriction of a lost truth. So anyway, those who disbelieve and those who agree and those who disbelieve twist the words. Allah says in the crowd that those who disbelieve will twist words to meet their own just needs. Just like in my last video, I said in from six one twelve to six one seventeen. Then again, in 6120, Allah warns us that he's going to allow people to receive, that, they're, he, that he's going to allow them to hear the message. He's going to allow the uh, shaitan within the community, those who disbelieve within the community, to be tempted and to come up with their own fancy words and to come up with conjure and, 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 and statements, vain speech, hadith. Come up with stories and fancy words to motivate one another but it's only useful to those who don't believe in the hereafter. It's only useful for those who don't believe in the truth of, of Allah. It's only useful for those who don't believe in the truth of the Quran. Otherwise, there's no reason to add. There's no reason to add anything to what is already perfect. The only reason you would accept anything is if you are saying it's not perfect. I can't. There is nothing. There is no. I can. I have thought about this long and hard. Am I wrong? Does Allah say anywhere that I am wrong? And the only argument that anybody can say is this ayat right here. Oh, before I even read it. Like I said, the disbelievers, Allah says the disbelievers take words and they twist it up. He, he calls them disbelievers. They take it out of context. We know, like for instance, the war verse. Where people say, but the Quran is bad because it says, and slay the disbeliever. But they don't know what it says in the beginning. 
the causes of the causes of the of the unrighteous actions by those who disbelieve what they're doing of oppression and aggression towards the believers the believers response and then the conditions that the believers are placed then it's called task condition standard what you're supposed to do how you're supposed to do it and why you're supposed to do it it's what standard you're supposed to do it by task condition standard Allah says and if they stop then you stop and if they return to the if they return to good action then you return to good action you meet them with equal force you don't exceed force Allah loves the compassionate and merciful because he is the compassionate and merciful come on so anyway like I said the war verse a non-Muslim, a non-believing person will say, all oh, Muslim are terrorists, and they're, they're told in the Quran to do wrong. They're told to fight the disbelievers and to slay them wherever they may be. Yeah. If you cause corruption in our lands, if you come and fight us, then I'm, if somebody comes into my house, I'm going to be allowed to fight them. This is me not twisting up the ayahs of Allah. This is me not twisting the signs. Do you know what people say when they say, obey Allah, obey the messenger? They say, you need to take what Allah gives you. You need to take what the uh, a messenger gives you. Allah says to take what the messenger gives you and not to take what he doesn't. And they say they have this like imaginary thing. Without reading the Quran, they come, they have this, this idea. Here, let me read the ayah to you. Surah 59, ayah 6. No, sorry, ayah 7. Actually, I'll read 6 and 7. What Allah provided to his messengers... Oh, what Allah, what Allah provided to his messenger without you having to battle for it on horses or on foot was because Allah sends his messengers against whomever he wills. Allah is capable of all things. Whatever Allah provided to his messenger from the people of the townships, then it shall be it shall be to Allah and his messenger for the relatives, the orphans, the poor, and the wayfarer. Thus, it will not remain monopolized by the rich among you. You may take what the messenger gives you, but do not take what he withholds from you. Be aware of Allah, for Allah is mighty in retribution. For the immigrants, and this is a, a, a ayah 8, for the immigrants who are poor and were driven out of their homes and deprived of their properties, they sought Allah's grace and a pleasure, and they supported, uh, they supported Allah and his messenger. They are the truthful ones. Ayah, the seventh ayah, Surah 59, let me read that one more time, real quick, just so you can capture what I'm saying. Inshallah, whatever Allah provided to his messenger from the people of the township, then it shall be to Allah and his messenger for the relatives, the orphans, the poor, the wayfarer. Thus, it will not remain monopolized by the rich among you. You may take what the messenger gives you, but do not take what he withholds from you taking. Be aware of Allah, for Allah is mighty in retribution. All right. So those who follow the hadith say, take what, take what the messenger gives you and, and don't take what he doesn't. All right. All right, fine. All right, for, there's two, there's two, there's illogic. There's, there's a whole bunch of problems with this statement. I'm going to, inshallah, highlight three of them. The first one is to, you may take what the messenger gives you, but do not take what he withholds from you taking. All right. If the messenger gives you the message, and the messenger doesn't verify the hadith, then he never gave you the hadith. Then you can't accept it because that would be going against the command of Allah to take what the messenger gives you. The messenger gave you the message. He didn't give you the hadith 230 years after or 179 years after or 353 years after. He didn't do that. He didn't say, write down these words of mine. Wait, wait, oh. Oh, there's a hadith that says he did, but there's also a hadith that says he didn't. And none of the first caliphs did neither. So what you're saying is, you don't want to accept what the messenger gave you. You want to create some new way of accepting what other people gave you when you don't know what the messenger actually gave you. Therefore, you're not following the Quran. If you take this one sentence, what you say is following the messenger. If you take that one sentence, you're not paying attention and you're not following what the messenger gave you because he didn't leave it he didn't write it he didn't verify it. Allah says verify everything but you're not using your reason second point hypocrisy you say that you know that the disbelievers take and they change things up and they twist the words of Allah to meet their whims they take a sentence out of an entire paragraph to meet their whims and you're doing it as well 
And then you have the you have the audacity to say that you will not that you have the audacity to say that it says to you may take what the messenger gives you. Guess what? The messenger gave you this ayah, this ayah in full. And let me tell you the task conditions and standards of this ayah so that you may understand your own hypocrisy. Hypo hypocrisy is in this. Whatever Allah provided to his messenger from the people of the townships, huh? There is there is a condition of the people of the townships. Then it shall be to Allah and his messenger. It shall go to Allah and his messenger. For the relatives, the orphans, the poor, the wayfarer, those in need that are talked about in those periods of time where the ideas of the righteous are talked about in certain uh, uh, 2, 177. Thus it will remain, it will not remain monopolized among the rich by the rich among you. So we're, we're told right here that if something comes from a group of people, that is not supposed to go to the rich. It's supposed to go to the needy. It's supposed to be a distribution of welfare. You're supposed to take care of the people who cannot take care of themselves in the situation in the society that you've established that is wrong. There's something going on. In the, like for instance, this is one, this is a hypocrisy because in the Middle East we see all the sheikhs and the scholars and the imams with the big houses and we got these big mansions and you got Dubai that's growing out crazy and these people have the right to call themselves Muslim, but they're acting no different than those of ignorance here in Las Vegas and the United States and in New York and in, um, in LA. They're not acting no different. But that's a digression from my, my original point, my main point. Thus, it will not remain monopolized by the rich among you. You may take what the messenger gives you, but do not take what he withholds from you taking. Be aware of Allah, for Allah is mighty in retribution. If you read this entire paragraph, you get a very different understanding than Hadith. If you read that entire paragraph, you get that you're supposed to give willingly to those that need it. And you're supposed to cycle. You're not supposed to give all the money to the rich because then the rich will monopolize it. Then they'll be in charge. Then Allah is no longer the then Allah is no longer the sovereign. Allah is protecting the poor among this from being oppressed. This is not talking about you taking vain desires and vain speech. But but if you take that one sentence, now you become a hypocrite because the messenger gave you that whole paragraph together. He gave you that whole ayah of context and understanding. But you don't have any reason. You don't think about what you're saying. You just want to follow what you want to follow. You want to follow the people before you, but they may not have been guided. But you're not going to listen to me, nope, because I'm just some young dude, some young Muslim dude that reads the Quran. What do I know? I don't accept Hadith. In your opinion, I'm just a Kafir. In your opinion, I'm, an Amush I'm a Mushrik. In your opinion, I'm not a true believer. True belief is in the heart of the believer. Those who are inclined to do truth and to research and verify truth and to find truth and to not accept contradictions and falsehood. These are the words of Allah in the Quran. We know for a fact that Allah's message is without contradiction and is proven without contradictions. 1400 years of scrutiny has shown that the Quran is not messed up. 1400 years of scrutiny has shown that men's words can always be messed up. So we have a, we're at a crossroads. Am I to accept the words of men or to suck the true words of Allah? Any, no matter what, anybody who's inclined to belief is going to accept the words of Allah. It doesn't matter if you call them a disbeliever or not, because that is not your destined, that is not your definition that we're following. We're following the words of Allah. So if we only accept Allah and we only accept the Quran and we accept what the messenger gave us, then we will accept the definition that is in the Quran, not the definition of the mullahs, the sheikhs, the scholars, and imams. It's very simple. Easily refuted. Like we, I could spend four hours here talking about every ayah that talks about it. I've taken copious notes on just this. Every time I read, I'm look, thinking like, yep, these people are hypocrites. Because it's constantly explained to those who read and to understand. If you are looking at yourself personally, and if you are looking at your own actions, if you are looking at your own belief, if you are trying to reform yourself every single day, Every single time anything can pop anything pops up that describes the actions of the person, that person will realize that they can either be that or they have been that or they could be that and they're warned away from it. I see that every single time I read the Quran. Every time. This this it's crazy to me that those who say that they follow Allah and they follow the Messenger take bits and pieces of what they want, which is described in the same section I read last time in my videos. Six 112 to 6 117 exactly they take from it what they want that's what Allah says <laughs> come on people get with the program so you may so 
the first thing, like I said, let me go. Get, let me hear, give you a real quick recap, so I can just highlight some of the problems and inconsistencies with this faulty logic. First, Allah and the Messenger, Allah says that take what the mess, take what Allah and the Messenger give you. Then you take that sentence, you you take that paragraph, you cut it, and you're becoming a hypocrite because you're not taking what Allah and the Messenger gave you, and you're only cutting the sentence out. Secondly, you're twisting the words to meet your own desires, and you're tricking people into believing. You're tricking good, honest people in, uh, in that think that you're right because they trust you with your judgment and your skills and your scholarly opinion. They're trusting you, and you're leading them astray because you're lying to them about this ayah. You're saying that this is about, this is about hadith when it's very clear. If you look at it with task conditions and standards, you're seeing that this is all about spreading wealth around. This is all about economics. This is all about stopping the rich from being, from having monopolized power. This is all about being aware of Allah and about taking care of the people who are oppressed and who need it so that you are not causing corruption and you're not spreading oppression in the land. But I'm just a regular dude who doesn't really know. I don't know anything. Apparently, apparently I don't understand. I don't understand what Allah is trying to tell me here. Do you really think that's true? Can I sit here and I can read the Quran and I can explain this stuff in detail? No different. The, the, Allah is very clear. Task, condition, standard. You guys make me sick. I'm sad. I'm really sad. But what am I to do? All these sheikhs and scholars are going to keep proving their point. Do you know why the sheikhs and the scholars want to do what they're doing? Because they benefit from it. Are you going to listen to somebody who benefits from you listening to them? in this world that doesn't benefit you at all in the hereafter because they cannot harm you unless Allah wills it. They cannot make you believe anything unless you want to believe it. And they will not, they cannot take you to have, uh, to Jannah, to heaven, and they cannot take you to hellfire. They can only offer suggestions and you can follow or you can do your own research and think critically. I'm inviting you to truth. I'm inviting you to read the Quran. Even if I'm wrong, even if I'm wrong, guess how you're going to prove me that I'm wrong? By reading the Quran, if you accept it. But if you don't, and you say, well, I understand the Quran, but you're automatically giving up your right to understand. And you will always not understand. Because you say the Quran is truthful, but there is no buts in truth. Even if I'm wrong, prove it. You can't say, well, uh, Teddy, well, salamu alaikum, peace be with you, um, and then say, oh, and then say I'm a disbeliever. Okay. Allah says, do not say, if somebody comes to you and they say peace, do not call them a disbeliever. If anybody on any video says that anybody who, if they say the Muslim who follows the Quran only, is a disbeliever. If they say that, they have gone against the Quran. They have gone against the words of Allah. I'm going to do this right now. Peace and blessings be upon all of you. I wish you nothing but peace and understanding and, and I wish the best for you. I wish the best for you. Inshallah, you will receive the best in recompense for your deeds. Ha! <laughs> Good ad. You like that? I threw that in there. Anyway, so now anybody who calls me a disbeliever if they hear me say salamu alaikum to you, if they do that, they're now going against the Quran. They're now going against the words of Allah. They're now going against the words of Allah and the Messenger. I dare you. I dare you to do it. I dare you to do that. Call me a disbeliever. Call me a hypocrite. Call me a mushrik. Call me a kafir. Call me anything you want. I dare you. You know what I'm saying, too. Those of you who are of understanding, those of you who either believe like I believe, who are going to watch the videos and support me, or those of you who disagree with me, you you know that I'm not saying anything that's not in the Quran. You know I'm not. And that's, and that's your problem. How can you refute somebody who's, you can only give me, you can give me a, a, a thumbs down comments, but you can't say why I'm wrong because you can't say I'm wrong. Because I'm not utilizing anything but the Quran to do this. You can't say, well, I don't accept that hadith. Because that would be you saying you don't accept Allah's message. And you can't say that outright. You have to, you have to hide that, you have to hide this idea. 
You have to hide. You have to hide the truth behind veils and veils and veils of interaction in your brain. You have to keep using cognitive dissonance to, to confuse yourself. You have to keep saying, "Yes, I do accept the Quran as perfect," but as soon as you do that, you're automatically the veil. It's like this. I accept this is Teddy, but wait, where's Teddy? Oh, he's not there because you can't you can't cover the truth. That's disbelief. That's and only those who know that there is truth can disbelieve in it. Those who don't know that there's truth can't disbelieve in it. So if somebody if somebody doesn't know what I'm talking about in my videos, and they don't know what the Quran is, or they don't know what Hadith is, they don't know who God is. Well, you know, it's kind of impossible at this point, but Let's just say hypothetically they never heard of any of these concepts. They can't be a disbeliever because they're not disbelieving in anything. Unless they say there is no God, they're not disbelieving in anything. I'm right now telling you that there is no way on God's green earth that the Hadith can be verified. That the Hadith that you call Hadith can be verified. Only the Quran can be verified. Because only the Quran is without contradiction. And it doesn't contradict itself. And it says it's from Allah. And Allah says he will protect it. And he's done all of these things. Allah made no such claims on Hadith. The Prophet Muhammad did not verify Hadith. There is nowhere in the Quran that says you should have Hadith. The only place there is that says you should have Hadith are the scholars, the Imams, the Mullahs, the Sheikhs that benefit from it. That allow, that get power and get money and have prestige for understanding this. For understanding the, the, the uh, Hadith. Challenge them. And see how angry they get because challenging the Hadith is challenging their existence. It's challenging their legitimacy. It's challenging everything that makes them part of the institutionalized religion that they call Islam. That is far from it. Islam is far better than what these people set up. And Allah says, uh, Prophet Muhammad says actually, they are going to leave this Quran. Why have my people left this Quran? Allah says that if you follow the majority of them, that you will be led astray. Majority. <laughs> Allah says that they don't want to follow the truth. They want to follow their. They want to follow what they they saw their parents doing. Abraham didn't do it, and he was a staunch monotheist. Jesus didn't do it, and the the uh, the everybody was telling him that he was he was crazy. Everybody was telling him he shouldn't do it. Mary didn't do it. She didn't commit sin. She shut her mouth and let the baby speak. Lot didn't do it. Noah didn't do it. Noah didn't. He didn't care about what the people were saying. He did not care. He said, you know what? No, no, I'm sorry. He did care. It caused him to have a heavy heart because they were disbelievers and they weren't listening. Just like all of you hypocrites aren't listening to me right now. But you know what? My ark is a lot. And my ark is the Quran. And I will ride this until the day that I die. Inshallah. Do something. Prove me wrong. Don't can't have a whole bunch of fancy words to prove me. You can't uh, to prove me wrong. You don't have a whole bunch of fancy words. You have to go to the source of all creation to say where Allah says to follow Hadith. None of you can find that. I promise. I promise. Inshallah. Inshallah. The best of you says, well, this young 27-year-old cat in the United States who doesn't know Arabic, I'll show him. Yeah. Show me. Prove it. And do your best at it. And then come to me and say that you and say that you believe in the, you believe in Allah and that you believe the Quran is fully detailed and complete. But I dare you, if you don't understand language or rhetoric, if you don't understand how that is covering something up, that is like hiding the truth behind a the veil, then you really need to do some analysis of language. You need to do some analogy uh, analysis of what Allah is saying to you. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, of fifty nine. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Glorifying the lies, everything in the heavens and earth, and he is the noble, the wise. He is the one who drove out those who rejected among the people of the book from their homes at the very first mass exile. You never thought that they would leave, and they thought that their fortresses would protect them from Allah. But Allah came to them from where they did not expect, and he cast fear into their hearts. They destroyed their homes with their own hands, and the hands of the and the hands of those who believed. So taking lesson, so you oh, oh you who possess vision 
I don't need to deconstruct your arguments because Allah deconstructs your arguments. I don't need to tear down the walls of your institution because Allah is allowing you to tear down the walls of your institution. Allah is showing your hypocrisy. Allah is showing your disbelief. I am just a vehicle to deliver a very clear and very precise message. Very clear and very precise. You have no reason to accept anything but the words that Allah gave you to accept, and you have no reason to accept something that somebody said the Prophet Muhammad says. If you really love the Prophet Muhammad, if you really love the Prophet Muhammad, if you really love the Prophet Muhammad, if you really love Allah, then you will follow what they gave you. You will not take an you will not take a sentence out of an ayah and turn it to mean something that you want. You will take it and you will accept it. You know why you will take it and accept it? Because you believe. And if you don't, then you are those of the people of the book because guess what we have the book too not just the Christians and the Jews but you have the book as well you are people of the book if you turn away after receiving knowledge oh you who believe or oh you who say you believe then you are a hypocrite and you are those who cover the truth there's really no way of putting it there's no there's no easy way of putting it I can talk for 20 minutes about each ayah each ayah from Allah that he says uh, every single point that every single one of you people who accept Hadith make, I can talk about them in full with it just utilizing the Quran. I could just read the Quran and tell you, it's like, where'd you get this idea? 48 times the Hadith are mentioned. 48 times. If you can find all 48 times where the word Hadith is used in the Quran and all the derivatives of the word and the, pre, and the uh, subjunctives or whatever the name is of the word. You can find all 48 of those. Find one of them and says, hey, go, go accept another word. Find one. All praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. He is far above everything that you set up. He is far above needing anything. He has no desire. He has no fear. You fear. You fear that you're not right. You fear that your prestige and that your, that your ability to think and all of the stuff that you've worked on all your life is meaningless. What if it is? So what? Accept truth. And if you're not willing to accept truth, then the suffering's upon the suffering that you get is upon you. All the problems that are happening in the world right now, in the Muslim, in the Muslim community, are happening because you're allowing it to happen to yourself. You're not willing to reform and Allah will not change what or not Allah will not change the situation of a person or a people until they change what's within themselves. It's very clear that you guys need to change what was, what is within yourselves. Even if I'm wrong, you need to really, really look at it. And look, I'll admit, I'm just a dude. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the future. I don't know the heavens and earth. I don't know the truth. I only know what I've read. I only know what has come to me. I don't know anything else. I'm just of those who submit their will to Allah entirely, and I'm commanded to do so. And I do that with the fullest of my heart. Ah, that's my mom. So I need to go soon because I love her. <laughs> Inshallah, she'll hear the message as well. But if she doesn't, again, she chose. Just like you choose. I can do nothing but bear witness to truth, and I can do nothing but to say what I see. And I see hypocrisy. I see lies. I see deceit. I see people leading other people to hellfire and tricking them into believing that something's true when they don't have proof. I see them telling people to stay. I see you if you teach Hadith, then what you're doing, if you're saying, hey, learn, go learn a hadith, every single time somebody goes and reads something untruthful, that's one less day or one less hour, one less minute, one less second that they're reading something from the Quran. Because you're telling them it's from the religion. Then they try to go and they, I went through this stuff in Christianity. I tried to prove Christianity right. And what ended up happening is I proved it wrong. I realized the hypocrisy and I realized the mistakes in it. Most of the converts who came to Islam have. And those who go on, the converts who come on here and to talk about the Quran, and we love Allah, and we love the Messenger, and we love the Quran because of this, because we receive the truth. And you don't even appreciate it. You don't even appreciate it. Otherwise, you wouldn't do what you do. We're the ones who are warning. Notice that. Take, take a fine notice of that. Notice who is saying, go to the Quran and go back to the Quran, like the Prophet Muhammad said. Notice those who say go back to truth. Well, you know why we we know we're inclined to truth because we've been doing falsehood our entire lives when we woke up from it, and we're trying to get the rest of the umma to wake up from their fault. If you want to change your situation, if you want to become the most powerful of all of Allah's creation, 
ever. Ever. If you want to become the most powerful of all the believers, of mental faculty, like it used to be, using reason and itch to have, then you'll reform. If not, you'll just conform to the rest of the world and you'll, just, you'll be no different than the Christians who celebrate New Year's, Christmas, and everything else. You'll just fall into paganism. No different than them. Inshallah, Allah will protect us from that. But it's a sad occurrence and a sad day. Peace be with you. God bless you. I hope you have a nice day. Assalamu alaikum. Hear the warning. Take heed. Have you no reason? Deuces.